Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I'm going to play this video and talk about things that are going on and better explain what's going on and talk about things that I think that are being done right and or done wrong. Without further ado, here we go. Hello, I'm Officer Nick Chambers, Public Information Officer for the Sparks Police Department. This critical incident community brief is intended to provide you with information about an officer-involved shooting that occurred in the 1600 block of Merchant Street in the city of Sparks on August 22nd, 2022. You're about to see relevant video footage and learn about other evidence and police You're about to see relevant video footage and learn about other evidence and police procedures related to this case. So you have a better understanding of what occurred based on what we know now. The regional officer involved shooting protocol conducts a thorough investigation alongside the Sparks Police Department who conducts a use of force investigation internally, which typically requires investigators to interview multiple witnesses, view numerous hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. Once completed, the investigation in its entirety will be submitted to the Washoe County District Attorney's Office for review. A word of caution. The images and information you're about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect and to defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for young children and sensitive viewers. Body-worn video cameras are worn by officers assigned to patrol duties. Body-worn cameras are worn at chest level and capture a general perspective within line of sight from that angle. The angle of the camera limits the viewer from seeing everything the officer saw and experienced. Upon activation, both audio and video will turn on. However, body-worn cameras have a buffer of video without audio beginning 30 seconds prior to activation. This feature is designed to capture incidents that occur suddenly where an officer does not have the time to immediately activate the camera. The following footage is actual body-worn camera video from this incident. I'm Deputy Chief Tara Edmondson. I'm going to give you a brief overview of a critical incident that resulted in an officer-involved shooting in the city of Sparks. On August 22nd, 2022, Sparks Police Dispatch received a 911 call from a woman who stated her husband was threatening her with a knife inside of her residence. The reporting party explained that her teenage son was also inside the residence and had suffered an unknown injury while attempting to disarm his father. During the 911 call, the reporting party said she had left her residence in fear for her safety. Dispatchers were advised by the reporting party that she had gone to a neighbor's house and could see the suspect actively looking for her outside. The suspect was described as a Hispanic male adult with facial hair wearing a black shirt. Press 911, what's the address of the emergency? Okay, ma'am, do you speak English? Yes. Okay, well, what's the address again? Okay, do you need police, fire, or paramedics? Police, my, my husband had a knife. Yeah, and I got, 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 he was, he was, he was threatening me. He okay. wanted Okay, where is the knife now? Because we got into an argument. He's in the apartment. I'm at the neighbor's house. Okay, is there, are your son still in the house? Yes, he's still in the house. He's he got a rifle too. He's done. Your son has a rifle too. Okay, your teenage sons, they're still in the house right now? Yes, okay. he okay. to away the knife because he was Did they get hurt? Huh? Did your sons get hurt? Daddy, he has to go to the doctor. He has to go to the doctor, Daddy. Daddy. Ma'am, did your sons get hurt? Huh? Did your sons get hurt when they tried to take the knife? Did they get hurt? Yeah, my son got hurt. Your son got hurt? Okay, how, how did they get hurt? With the knife or with something else? Yeah, with the knife, with the knife, because he tried to take away the knife from him. Okay, did he stab them? Yeah, where are they injured? Where did they get injured? 
on the hand. Okay. Okay. Did did they did your husband stab your son? No, my son tried to he tried to take away the knife because he was a, he was a one nothing to happen to him. Okay. What and he did he was the first thing my son was trying to defend me. Okay. I am so sorry, ma'am. We're on our way to help you, okay? We're gonna get an ambulance started for your sons too. What's your husband's first and last name? My 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 husband just got out of the house and uh, he's looking for me. I'm not the neighbor's house inside the, the neighbor's okay. apartment. Okay, what color clothing is your husband wearing? He's wearing a black uh, shirt and, and jeans. I don't remember what color because I just got home. Okay. That's, okay. That's, that's okay. That's okay. He was you, there waiting for me. Do you have any idea what color clothing he's wearing or no? I remember the shirt is black. I just got home and he attacked me. Okay. If you don't know, that's okay, but my officers are in the area. They're looking for him, so we need to know what he's wearing. Do you remember what color his clothes are? Black shirt, and he has a uh, beard and, and mustache. Black shirt, and he has a beard and mustache. And he, he has short hair. Okay. All right. See, the, the thing is, uh, I, he's my estranged husband. Strange he doesn't leave me. He doesn't leave me. Upon arrival, officers could hear screaming and yelling coming from the apartment. Officers approached the apartment and saw a subject armed with a knife in the doorway who matched the description provided by the reporting party. Additionally, officers observed a younger male who had visible signs of injury within arm's reach of the suspect and was later identified as the suspect's son. Officers gave multiple verbal commands for the suspect to drop the knife. The suspect refused to drop the weapon and continued yelling at the officers aggressively while holding the knife. Due to the close proximity of the suspect to his injured son, the officers, and his refusal to drop the knife, they believed he presented an imminent and immediate threat of death or serious bodily harm. Officers then discharged their service weapons, striking the suspect. Officers provided medical aid to the suspect until they were relieved by medical personnel. The suspect was then transported to a local area hospital where he was later pronounced deceased. The officers involved in this incident were equipped with body-worn cameras that were activated during this incident. Nothing wrong with the audio. Uh, this is common um, pre-event buffer footage. Uh, the camera has not been turned on to record mode yet. Um, and this buffer mode allows uh, anywhere between 10 to 60 seconds of video to be captured before the record button is hit. That way it can capture things that occur suddenly and rapidly. Um, it starts recording. Now it's recording. on the stairs right now. Okay, so uh, he gets, he's responding to this call and I mean I'm assuming that the dispatchers have relayed the fact that there is uh, a knife in play, someone has been cut, and I'm hoping that they would have also relayed the fact that that woman mentioned he has a rifle. Um, even if they didn't say anything about the rifle, the fact that he has a deadly weapon, um, I believe that this officer should have got out with his rifle or shotgun, whichever he may have issued to him, and if he even has it issued to him. <clears throat> there are some agencies out there that don't issue rifles and shotguns uh, out to every single officer. Um, and, and that may be the case here. I don't, I don't know if it is. Uh, but if he did have a rifle or shotgun in his squad car, uh, then he should have got it out. 
Uh, this is one of the biggest pet peeves that I have when it comes to these officer-involved uh, shooting videos. Officers responding to calls where there's a deadly weapon involved, they know that there's a deadly weapon involved, and they neglect to get out uh, with a long gun. If you're going to a fight uh, that has a deadly weapon, you need to bring a long gun and bring your friends that have long guns as well. Uh, rifles and shotguns are far more superior to pistols and they are more effective uh, and efficient at incapacitating threats than, than pistols are. Uh, pistols are, are pretty damn weak. The only reason why pistols are carried day in and day out is they're comfortable, convenient, um, and they can also end up capacitating in an emergency situation where you all of suddenly need it. Uh, the majority of law enforcement does not get involved in gunfights every single day. Uh, your local agency, if you look at your local agency, it's probably been a long time since they've been in a gunfight. And even if it was recent that they've been involved in a gunfight, it's probably been a, a while uh, since uh, before that that they had gotten involved in a gunfight. So normal police work day in, day out is just talking to people and writing reports or typing reports now for most places um, and sitting with people. I mean, that, that's it. Uh, it's not like police are getting into gunfights every single day. So there's no need to carry rifles all the time. Uh, the pistol can be carried. And if something rapidly happens, um, uh, then they've got that pistol to be able to, to defend themselves with, and it can incapacitate, but it sucks in comparison to a rifle and a shotgun. <clears throat> so knowing that you're going to a call that there's a deadly weapon involved, you need to get your rifle or shotgun out. Uh, the terminal ballistics from those is way better than what a pistol could ever dream of doing. There are more people walking around the day who've been shot with pistols than there are people who've been shot with rifles. The ballistics for pistols, they just they just suck in comparison to rifle cartridges. That's, that's I mean, there's no other way of explaining that other than getting down to the nitty gritty numbers and stuff, which I'm not going to do. I'm not going to nerd out like that. Um, he did park, um, you know, a little bit away. You know, it's not like he just pulled up into the parking lot or anything. Um, don't see a whole lot else with this camera view. It looks like it's possible that there's another squad parked down here and another officer on the sidewalk, but I can't tell very well uh, with the clarity of the video. But it looks like there's another unit there. Um, and that's another thing to consider, too. Um you know, the circumstances involved, uh, you know, you don't want to go into something all completely by yourself um, for most most things. It's best to always have your backup there. All right, so this officer in front of him does have a rifle. Fucking shithead. Let's back that up. With a knife by his own dad. 
and he's telling the police that he hates them. <laughs> what a fucking... Ugh. And he cusses at the ones downstairs. Okay. Next person up's gonna be him. Hold up, hold up. Okay, we're gonna cover him. Step around right behind me. For the rest of the apartment. Yep. You go hands up. Alex, you go hands. I'm gonna step these front. Alex, you hold me. Okay. If anybody else is in the apartment, let yourself be known now. If anybody else is in the apartment, make yourself known now. This is the Sparks Police Department. We're here to help you. Hey, I need one. We need to speak. You good with them? Yep, good. Go. I'm with you. Okay. Okay. If you're in the apartment, let us know you're okay. Call out to us. Okay. If you're in the apartment, the small room, we're clear. What's behind right you? Hold on. There's a door right here. Yep. Hold on, on us. Sparks Police, if you're in the apartment. Okay. You okay? Yeah, are you? Yeah. Are you okay? Is any unit out of the Yeah, we're good. Does anyone have a female? We don't know where the female's at. Let's do a double back, nice and slow. Double back, nice and slow, guys. There's blood all over. So they're doing a protective sweep right now, looking for potential victims or other suspects. All the way in the back. Hey, Omar. Go with him. Can you start taking pictures as we do this? Yeah. Let me get those on just guessing it. Yep. Are we taking the weapons off? Yeah, padding we haven't. I have... Actually, it's all on video already, so... I'm addressing here. Okay, we got one to the chest right there. Okay, let's get a chest. Mm -hmm. that, dude? Yeah. Here's one. Uh. There you go. Is this a shot as well? I can't see any. Or tell them. Did you no. check for a pulse? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to. I'm not confident with doing that. Yeah. If you mind checking for a pulse, I'm gonna keep working on this chest one just in case. I don't know how to check for a pulse, too. Right here. Right I will. Now. Yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? I don't know how to check for a pulse, too. Right here. Right I will. How the fuck do you know how to check for a pulse? <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to that down, yeah, Steve. Because if not, we need to start compression. Gotta stop the bleeding first. Yeah. Four Is this been clear? Yes, yes, yes. everything's clear. Where did we clear. find her? No, we're looking for her. You come out here. Huh. There's blood all over this apartment, so just be careful. Oh. Yeah, I'm fine. What? Can you check the zone in his danger zone? Yeah, he's will. So, my bull shot. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to turn this off, but we did on the camera. Yep, turn it off. No, I'm saying my suspects, we shot it into the apartment towards the back walls. We need to check it. We need to see if there's any residences on the back. Okay. Okay, and with just that or with your... Just my handgun. He had an AR. Okay. So, go ahead and turn okay. this off. Okay, turn that off. Okay. 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 Okay.
Let's go. All right, so this is pretty standard. Um, after uh, an officer involved shooting, uh, a supervisor will grab that officer who fired and then um, take them away from the immediate scene and uh, put them in an area where they can't be talking to other people or anything like that. Um, and then we'll typically uh, have them turn their camera off. Um, and then, you know, there's some people who are like, oh, they're hiding shit. You know, they're turning the camera off. No, they're not, uh, they're not hiding shit. There's nothing else to be seen. Uh, they're no longer, um, uh, in the crime scene. They're no longer involved with a suspect or anything like that. Uh, there's no need for them to keep the camera on and recording. The officer is also a citizen who has an American citizen. They are still an American citizen who has rights. They have the right not to make any self-incriminating statements. That's their Fifth Amendment right, just the same as anyone else. The camera being turned on jeopardizes them with their right to the Fifth Amendment. And when you think about a self-defense shooting, your body goes through a lot of psychological and physiological changes. And one of the things that occurs is you have a huge adrenaline dump. If you've ever been to a haunted house, if you've ever watched a really scary fucking movie and had the shit scared out of you, if you've ever been in a car wreck, ever been in a fight, something that got your your uh, fight or flight freeze syndrome kicked in and you had a huge adrenaline dump. You you will better be able to better understand what I'm talking about. When that happens and that adrenaline is is coursing through your body, you are not thinking very clearly because your forebrain is not in 100% control at this point. Part of your midbrain is in control. And so there's like this fight between midbrain and, and forebrain. And you've got all this adrenaline going on. And you got to think of adrenaline as like a drug. So you're kind of under the influence of a drug called adrenaline. And you're not thinking clearly with forebrain. You're not thinking tactfully, I guess you could say. So you may say something that you would ordinarily not ever say. You may, if you're a person who doesn't use uh, cuss words a whole lot... Uh, if you've been put in this situation, you may let some fucking F-bombs drop when you ordinarily would not do that because you do not have that full control over your, uh, your forebrain. Uh, you may, uh, say something in a way that could be used against you just the way you said it. So you could say something like, I shot the son of a bitch. Well, I mean, yeah, you shot the guy. That's that's on camera. That's that's there's no uh debating that. Um and it's it's obviously justified. The dude's got a knife, but by saying I shot the son of a bitch, well that kind of looks bad. Uh someone could could try to use that against you. And that could uh, hurt you in a, in a civil case potentially um, or to, if you got a super liberal uh, fucking prosecutor there they could be like you know what this wasn't you know fully necessary he called him a son of a bitch I think he was uh, um, you know prejudiced against this person we're going to look at potential murder charges or manslaughter charges so you don't want to make statements right after a self defense shooting you're all amped up on, on adrenaline. You're not going to speak uh, very clearly, or you're not going to be speaking the same as you would if you was cool, calm, collected, sitting on the couch. Like, it's just, you know, two totally different uh, operating zones, so to speak. Um, so that's why uh, cameras are, are typically turned off. One, there's there's nothing else for those cameras to be capturing. They're not in the crime scene anymore. They're not doing anything with the suspect. Uh, and then 
Two, as an American citizen, they have rights as well. They have the right not to say anything that could incriminate them. And there's nothing, nothing that the, you know, after watching all these videos, uh, even before I started doing the Monday quarterback series and, and just watching these videos, like there's none of them where anything wrong is being done uh, from the legal sense. Now there's some wrong tactics and stuff, you know, like you know, not using rifles when they should be, that kind of stuff. But from the legal sense, like nothing's wrong going on, um, and that's <laughs> and that's one reason why these liberals who first pushed for cameras are now whining about the cameras because all the footage totally goes against what they've been claiming is going on. They've been claiming that fucking excessive force and all this other bullshit's going on but after years of having body cameras that shows that that's really not happening at the level that they've been claiming is happening and now they're like oh we need to we need to censor these videos we need to protect these videos from getting out the public we need to make them more secret <laughs> anyway moving on <laughs> Again, nothing wrong with uh, the audio. It's in pre-event buffer mode. Here soon you'll hear some audio when he hits the record button. Alright. So, I like how as he is arriving to the area... He is turning the camera onto record mode before he ever stops and gets out the car. I like that. Um, that is something that I, I always advocate for uh, people to do is turn that camera on before you ever stop and get out. That way, as you roll up and you do get out the car and something, boom, pops off right then and there, it's already recording and you're already uh, capturing stuff that's going on and you're not going to miss out on uh, recording uh, very important shit. It's already recording. There's been times where people uh, got out and boom, something happened right then and there and in the heat of the moment, they forgot to turn the camera on within that, that instant, within the first minute or so. There's been times where people didn't realize until well later, like, oh shit, I haven't turned my camera on. And at that point, there's nothing to be able to capture on the pre-event buffer. It's well past that 60 second mark, like, or 30 second mark. However, it's, you know, it's configured. It's well past that point. And stuff that, you know, could have been captured on there could have been stuff to exonerate them or make it more clear cut and take out any questions. And because there's nothing there, now there's the ability for the defendant, um, or the plaintiffs to, um, um, say, oh, well, this happened. But there's no way for you to prove otherwise because your camera wasn't on. So always have your camera turned on and recording before you ever get out of that car. So I like how he starts it recording before he's ever stopped and getting out. And sometimes shit can happen as you're rolling up and coming to a stop. All right, he's getting that rifle out. Now, here's something else to think about, too, with this guy. This guy probably has a little bit more higher level of training. I can see what appears to be uh, a vest in that passenger seat right there. So this guy could actually be uh, a part of, like, the SWAT team or something like that. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how they configure their SWAT team stuff. Uh, most agencies, it's kind of like a part-time not a part-time position. Um, it's not a full-time position like a fire department. Like that's a, like, like that's all you do. Uh, there's only a few places in the country that operate like that. New York and Los Angeles are two that come to mind. Their SWAT team is completely full-time. Officers assigned to that, that's all they do. They don't do patrol shit. 
majority of the country uh, because you know agencies are not well funded and they have only so many people people on a SWAT team also work patrol they do normal police work and when something happens that needs SWAT then they come together so that's probably I would say what this guy is he's probably on the SWAT team and he rolls around with his SWAT gear uh, in the passenger seat that way he can rapidly deploy with it and so with that being said him being on a SWAT team he's probably had a little bit a little bit more advanced training um, and more focused training and so he's probably got a better mindset based off all that training and he's automatically getting his rifle out because why he's showing up to a fucking call that's involving a deadly weapon <laughs> Now, could he have gotten this out before he ever stopped? Yes, most certainly. Uh, he has it up in the cab of the vehicle while driving. He could have uh, disengaged the magnetic lock, got it out of the mount, threw that sling over his neck and wore it like a, a necklace or, or one-point uh, sling configuration, uh, and charged it up, and then when he got there, boom, roll out the truck with it, dangling from him or he could have stuffed it in between his leg and the console and then as he got out of the vehicle he took it with him um, or uh, he could have just simply pulled off to the side of the road real quick perform those functions and then get back on the road and proceeded to the call that's actually what I recommend doing is before you ever get to the scene just stop get the damn rifle out charge it up get it ready sling it and then proceed to the scene that way when you get there you can roll out of that vehicle with that rifle in hand um, otherwise right now with him doing it what if dude came out of the apartment and started popping rounds off well he ain't got his rifle out and ready for the fight yet Person up's gonna be hands on, then we're gonna provide medical. Okay. We're gonna cover hands. Send medical and stage up. You go hands, Alec. Alec, you go hands. I'm gonna step in front, Alec, okay. or the you hold lethal on him. Okay. If anybody else is in the apartment, let yourself be known now. If anybody else is in the apartment, make yourself known now. This is the Sparks Police Department. We're here to help you. Hey, I need one. We need to do a safety sweep. We don't have a female yet. Okay. I'm with you. Okay. okay. If you're in the apartment, let us know you're okay. Call out to us. Go, go. Okay. If you're in the apartment, the small room, we're clear. Copy, small room behind me. Take it. Yep, take it. Omar on us. Sparks Police, you're in the apartment. I got you. Are you okay? Yeah, are you? Yeah. Are you okay? Is any unit out with the female? Yeah, we're gonna bite down for you, bro. Is anyone out with the female? Let's do the whole thing. Nice and slow. Safety sweep complete. Nobody else is inside. All right. Okay. Where's your shot? Here's my uh, here's my kit. 
Damn. Just give him all right the hands. Right there. Should be one of the Just head. Just get him all the way on the collar on his back. Should be one of the head. Just get him all the way on the collar on his back. Right. Okay. Where's the shot? Here's my, uh, here's my kit. Should be one of the head. Just get him all the way on the collar. Uh, so you hear him say, where's he hit? And then you hear, should be one in the head. So you couldn't see very much from the actual uh, shooting itself with just the way the cameras were positioned and everything. Um, I'm not even really fully sure if the guy with the rifle even fired his rifle or not. Uh, we can tell the guy with the pistol definitely fired. Um, but it, like I said, it's so hard to say, especially from this guy's camera angle because it was kind of... Uh, pointed more into his arm area and that was really all you could see the most of during the shooting itself you could see the other officers handgun fire uh, but you couldn't very distinctively tell if the rifle had fired and from the pistol officers camera you couldn't really distinctively tell if uh, the rifle had fired i do like how he's automatically able to produce a med kit um uh, you know, I'm a big advocate of the mindset that if you're going to carry tools to induce trauma, you should carry the tools to reduce trauma. So he's able to, bam, automatically pull something out right then and there and put it into play. So that tells me uh, this officer is a little bit more switched on. Uh, he's got probably a little bit better training behind him. And if he has, even if he hasn't had a whole bunch of extra additional training outside the agency, or even provided by the agency that tells me that he is probably really paid attention uh, probably a lot more than other people and it's just really switched on um, now when it comes to your personal kit I am a I'm a believer that um, the only time that your personal medical kit should ever be used on anyone else other than you or a teammate is when there is a, uh, a shit ton of backup on scene and the scene is 110% secure. Um, then I think it's safe to use your stuff on bad guys. Um, if not, you know, if it's just you and one other person there and the bad guy's down and you start using your personal kit on the bad guy and the bad guy's able to um, or the bad guy's friend comes around, sees stuff's going on, decides to start fighting you all, shoots you all. Uh, if you only have one tourniquet and you've already put it on that bad guy, but now you need the tourniquet for you or your partner, or you're screwed. What are you going to do? You're going to take that tourniquet off that bad guy and then put it on you? You're going to take that uh, uh, compressed gauze that you packed in his wound, you're going to unpack it and put it in your bullet hole? <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. So that's why I say your personal kit is for you and or a teammate. And the only way it gets used on anybody else if it's 110% scene secure. Here's my, uh, here's my kit. Should be one that has to all the way on the way on back. All the way on the back. I'm clearing behind you, Alex. All the way on the back. Code four for medics, send them in number E Edward. Code four for medics. Behind you. Hey, Mark. Let's go. I'm good, bro. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, let me stay on scene and help the medic. No, bro. No, give me that. Let me stay on scene and help the medic. Me and Lee still inside. Okay. Are you a shooter? Hey. I'm good, brother. I'm good. Let me take it to you, brother. Let me take it. What should we do? Uh, we gotta figure out this guy's. Uh, we gotta do medical. One more on us. Close up, I need medical help. What's up? What'd you say? Medical. Where's he at? I don't know yet. So he's he's cuffed. Um, 
it's a standard thing to cuff people after they've been shot because you don't know if they're going to get back up again. Uh, lots of people who've been shot with pistols have gotten back up again. Famous case that's often referenced within firearms training and especially within police training is a Miami-Dade shootout with the FBI and um, a couple bank robbers back in the 1980s. Bad guys took uh, multiple hits and they were still alive and able to fight and end up killing uh, two FBI agents and seriously wounding some others. So... Uh, bad guys typically always get cuffed after they've been shot, even if they appear to be incapacitated, because sometimes they wake back up. Uh, case in point, what I just referenced um, in the beginning of that gunfight, uh, the bad guy got shot in the head and was temporarily knocked out. And then he woke back up during the middle of this gunfight, crawled out of his car, and got into the car of an FBI agent and attempted to take off in it. So... People get cuffed after they've been shot. Is anyone out with the female? We don't know where the female's at. We don't know where she's Thanks at. Nice and slow. All right, Shane. Ready? Yep. Pull them up towards me on this side. Yep. All right. Okay. 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 Where is he shot? Here's my, uh, here's my kit. Just get him all the way on his, all the way on his back. Just get him all the way on his, all the way on his back. All the way on his back. All the way on the back. We're going to pull him this way. Is this the shot? Hey, Omar, go, give it a brown. Get him out here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Abby, can you start taking pictures as we do this? Yeah. Yep. Do we check him for weapons at all? Yeah, Patty, we have him. We have. Actually, it's all on video here. So. Trauma dress in here. Okay, we got one to the chest right there. Okay, let's get chest. Okay. You on that, dude? Yep. Here's one of them. Uh, here you go. Is this a shot as well? I can't see any right there. Did you check for pulls? <clears throat> I don't know how to. I'm not. Is confident with doing that. Yeah. I'm not. Exactly. Yeah, they blur it pretty quick. Did you check for a pulse? <clears throat> I don't know how to. I'm not. Exactly. There's a moment where um, the blur doesn't cover the face, but you can't see it very well because uh, of the camera moving and the movements and it being uh, no overhead lights on, just a flashlight on. Um, so you can't really see the extent of his injuries or anything, but they do. You do hear him say that there's one in the chest, uh, and then that other officer said there should be one in the head. Go ahead, we're doing that. Yeah. If you mind checking for a pulse, I'm gonna keep working on this chest one just in case. I don't know how to check for a pulse. Right here. I will. Yeah. But I'm so he mentions that you know. Basically, he says if he doesn't detect a pulse, he's gonna have to start CPR. I can't comment. I've never done it. So, report for medics. Has this been clear? Yes, yes. yes. everything's clear. Everything's clear. clear. No, we're looking for her. You come out here. Uh -huh. So, that's another one. Yep. Use brother? Well, there's just one. It's over there. I'm gonna carry a paper towel. Just use that as your compressions. Go ahead, start compressions. I'm gonna start looking at his face. Is there a light switch in here?
You're getting a little higher on this one. Yeah. Chip in. The suspect was later identified as 59-year-old Sparks resident Francisco Pena. The investigation revealed that Pena was in possession of a knife during the incident. Further investigation confirmed that Pena and the reporting party did not live together and had been separated for several years. It was also revealed that Pena had brought a loaded black semi-automatic rifle in addition to the knife with him into the residence. The Sparks Police Department and its officers take incidents such as these very seriously and they are treated accordingly. For questions or additional information regarding the Sparks Police Department, please visit www. All right. Um, fortunately, this dude did not have this rifle and was able to put it into play. If he did, it, it could have ended badly for those officers. Um, I, I highly doubt those officers were wearing... Um, rifle rated type of armor um, and his rounds would have very easily gone through the armor that they were wearing and very seriously physically injure them and or kill them so thankfully he did not um, have the time to put this rifle into play it seemed like he was so distracted by the sun and and everything that um, he just wasn't able to, to, to put it into play so that's a good thing um, who knows what this guy's intentions were you know Maybe he was wanting to kill the wife. Uh, I don't know. Uh, sounds like he probably was wanting to kill her. Um, don't know the circumstances behind it, you know. Could have been a long, drawn-out kind of thing. Divorce and custody issue. I have no idea. But uh, it's certainly a, a domestic violence kind of issue. And domestic, is uh, domestic cases for law enforcement have historically been extremely dangerous. Lots of cops have been seriously injured and or, and or killed responding to domestic violence type of calls um not much else to say about this uh it's pretty pretty cut and clear um this guy had came there with what seemed to be obvious intentions of causing harm to people he had caused harm to someone it may have been accidental may have been don't know um but officers get there they see that there's a person bleeding he's got a knife He's not dropping the knife, and the only time he drops the knife is after he's been shot. So the officers responded appropriately to this call um, and acted appropriately when presented with a deadly force encounter. Not much else to say. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.